Should we call this podcast Bye Bye Brits? Welcome to the fourth episode of our second series of the Valencia Property Podcast. Lots has been going on in our first month back after the summer break, so to bring you up to date with everything, of course, we bring you the podcast. We're going to have a look at each post we've written uh, in the last month or so, and also we'll have two main parts to the podcast this week. Firstly, about the effects of the incompetence running the UK in a section we call Bye Bye Brits. And then a look at how inflation is working in supermarkets in Spain and the day-to-day costs of living here. Firstly though, let's look at what we've published on the blog in the last month to bring you up to date if you haven't been following. We started the month with our autumn reports on the market. For those of you who haven't read it, the market remains solid and prices continue to rise slowly. Interest rates are starting to rise on mortgages though, and that may slow down the market, especially if banks start making lending criteria stricter. Currently, they haven't. We then moved on to answering more of your questions, just like we do here on the podcast. As usual, we had a lot of questions, and as usual, I got sick of people on Facebook talking rubbish without any experience or authority about things. Most especially, I got into the subject of squatters in Spain. Read the article for more answers, as the link is in the show notes. Based on that, we then talked about how to get a good tenant for your property in Spain once you're an owner and perhaps want to rent it out. Lots of obvious things in there, of course, but we also advise to offer your place at below market value in order to get the best choice of tenants. It seems counterintuitive, but it's a good way of getting a good tenant. We're still in the process of doing research on the craft beer places, but we finished our food recommendations mentioned in the last episode of the podcast and published them. So go to the notes at the end of the pod and click on that and all of the other articles. You need to be certain to understand that a lot of research is going into the craft beer article. Funnily enough, we've had plenty of offers to help with the research from our clients too. Who knew people like beer? On to some of the inquiries we've had this week and my favourite inquiry was as follows. We were asked about how to find out if a particular north facing terrace would get much sun. We recommended the app Shadow Map, where you can put in the address and find out lots more about when the sunshine will be directly on the terrace and at what times of year. It's not just based on the position of the sun though, but also the buildings around it, so it's really useful. Imagine that you've got a second floor terrace and you think I'm going to get a lot of sun there, but the building on the opposite side of the road to the south is an eight floor building. You're going to get no sun. So it's very important to know these things. Our main part of the podcast this week is, do we have to say bye bye to the Brits? I suspect there'll be a few casualties of the total clusterfuck, let's call it that and lose our ability to broadcast in India, that is the British government and their total lack of competency. Well, I say that, but maybe they are highly competent when it comes out that they were doing a favour for their hedge fund mates by crashing the pound and making Christian Odie billions by telling him what they were going to do a few days before. Insider trading anyone? Apparently I can't say that, but it's been said. My feeling is they knew they cannot win the next election, so they're going for a scorched earth policy to leave any incoming government hamstrung by the debts they pass on, and an economic situation so dire, so that five years will be nowhere near enough time to sort out the fiasco. When the IMF and Moody's are telling you to tone down the neoliberalism, then you've gone much too far. Now, I was writing this on Wednesday the 28th of September, and the BOE had just stepped in, the Bank of England had just stepped in. The intervention has managed to bring back some of the losses, but at the expense of the interest rate rises and the UK having a for sale sign placed on it. Oh, and the small matter of £65 billion. However, what this podcast is about isn't incompetence, venality and naked greed. It's about Valencia property and by extension, Spanish property and life. What does this mean for both Brits in Spain and for those wanting to come to Spain? Firstly, for those wanting to come here, your government's spooking of the markets meant a few things. Number one, your purchase just got around 10% more expensive compared to last week, but the Bank of England intervention helped you to claw back some of your spending power. The pound buying fewer dollars and fewer euros isn't going to help anyone. Two, 
your living costs here just went up if you're still earning pounds. Again, a rough 10% increase, now about 5%. But when you add that to the 10% inflation rate, it means your life earning in pounds is devaluing rapidly. Thirdly, those living here earning money in pounds or fixed income, such as UK pensions, were just given a kick in the unmentionables for the foreseeable future. And four, and this is the big one, I suspect the British market for Spanish property has just been wiped out for now. Brexit brought the pound down from 127 to around 116, and this was the first big kick to Brits wanting to live abroad. This could well be, as we say in Spain, the estocada. That's when the matador finishes off the bull. The bulls are the Brits, already bleeding from so many wounds thanks to 12 years of scandalously inept Tory government, and this is the final knife in the back of the neck. Yes, the party of business. There's a bright side for a few Brits already here though. If they were thinking of selling their property, then suddenly they have the opportunity to sell quickly in euros and transfer back to the UK the resulting pounds. They'll get more money for their sale without incurring a higher capital gain. This will be looked into by pensioners living on fixed incomes here. The drop in the value of the pound may well be the last straw for them as it compounds the effects of inflation in Spain itself. But more on the inflation later. It's much higher on baked beans and other imported goods from the UK. Mercadona recently upped the price of beans by just over 20%, for example. Pensioners may think that this would be the opportunity to sell up there in Spain if they were thinking of returning to the UK. Although, why anyone would want to be at returning to the UK at the moment? It's absolutely beyond my limited understanding of this world. This will affect the market on the costas, of course, much more than here in Valencia, as there are many more UK pensioners living there on fixed incomes. Any British digital nomads living and working in Valencia might want to ask to be paid in euros and dollars rather than pounds if the run on the pound continues in order to protect their income as they're actually living here in Spain. Now, for those who care how it will affect Valencia property, I, I know, I know, that's not your major concern in life, but it is mine because I run the business. I was phoned by a journalist this morning asking how this affects our business and what we expect. The truth is, it doesn't move the needle for us. Last year, our biggest market was the USA, and we're much more affected by the strength of the dollar, meaning more American clients. This year so far, it's the Netherlands, the USA, followed by Belgium, obviously not affected because it's the euro, Canada, another currency which is quite strong at the moment, Ireland, and then the UK. They all come close together. Back in the day, our main market was essentially British, and the decision to focus on other markets, especially the North American one after the financial crisis of 2008, and then even more so after Brexit, has paid off. It's paid off quite well, I have to say. I was also asked the question about the future for British buyers in Spain. Let's have a little history lesson and go over those changes in the exchange rate over the years. After the 2008 financial crisis, the UK allowed the currency to devalue, whereas Spain couldn't as it was in the Eurozone. Therefore the pound went down from 147 to 126 in a few weeks. British buyers didn't come back into the market until they had finally accepted and realised that the pound wasn't going to go back up to its previous levels. The same happened after the initial shock of Brexit when the value went down from 126 to 111. Brits only came back as the pound crept back up to around 116. Now last week it was back down to 110, 111, it even hit 108 in the middle of the night on Japanese markets, before the Bank of England stepped in. And it'll be interesting to see if the pound recovers somewhat once the BOE stimulus wears off, to give Brits the chance to pay a bit less for their Spanish property. I suspect it won't. However, the BOE having to raise interest rates in the UK to stop the economy collapsing and to protect pension funds from going bust, people's everyday costs will be going up even more, and the housing market looks like it's suddenly in extreme problems in the UK, due to the fallout from Kwame Kazi's budget. Yes, it's Kwame Kazi. Today, it's been reported that the average mortgage rate offer in the UK is 6.09%, and that's up from 2.25% a year ago. Those who wanted to sell their properties to buy in Spain will firstly 
they'll get less money for their sale. Secondly, they might not even be able to sell because they won't find as many buyers willing to pay those interest rates on mortgages. And even if they do sell, they'll find that that money buys fewer euros when you want to buy here. It's a double whammy. Well done Tories, well done. You ended free movement for your own people and now you're making sure that anyone who still wanted to leave can't afford to do it now. Once more, well done to the Tory party. Let's move on away from that absolute mess and on to inflation in Spain. Are we seeing differences in prices in the supermarkets? We get asked this quite a lot. Well, I'm a bit of an expert on Mercadona. I went to my local Mercadona, it's time to give you some real world examples. I spend a lot of money in there, so you could say I'm an authority on how much stuff costs each year. And I do all of our family's shopping, so remember the prices for things I buy regularly, I can remember them. And of course, the story is mixed. Bananas, for example, are the same price as last year, at 125 euros per kilo. That's 1 euro 25. However, if you get Canary Islands bananas, they're 3 euros 10, up from 2.75 a year ago, so about 10%. Olive oil is now 4.25, up from 3.65 last year. This 16% rise has been caused by two things, though. It's been caused by the inflation and the more expensive way that, you know, everything in the supply chain is more expensive. But also there's been a drought in Western and Southern Spain and production has dropped as a result. Wraps, we do a lot of wraps rather than bread. Uh, they're up to 130 from 120, so about 8%. Good mozzarella, 175 up from 165, so about 6%. San Miguel beer, this is a good one, 62 cents a can up from 58 cents, so not too much of a rise but it's remained at 49 cents if you buy a pack of 12. So a really good incentive to get totally plastered for just a little bit more than five euros with a 12 pack. Chicken breasts are up by about 10% since last year and loose potatoes are up 179 per kilo from around 155 last year. So 14, 15%. Four protein yogurts are 150 up from 140. So again, 7%. But tuna in olive oil is up to 4.65 from 3.85 last year. Another double whammy there because of the olive oil increase and also the tuna price rise. Lots of people have changed to cheaper tuna in sunflower oil, but then that got hit thanks to the war in Ukraine, where most of the sunflower oil comes from. And more people are buying it in brine now. There's plenty of seawater. Salad leaves are up to 103 from 99 cents, and chickpeas have gone up from 69 to 75 cents. So yes. Prices are getting higher here for food. However, it's still really cheap compared to most other countries. In terms of energy, electricity is up around 20%, which is partially offset by the government reducing the VAT on energy from 21 to 5%. Imagine you can do that in the European Union, eh? Some people in the UK would have you believe you couldn't. Gas is up a similar amount and petrol is up by about 40% in the last year. But again, the government is slightly offsetting that as they currently pay 20 cents on every litre for you. So what you see in the garage, it may say 169 for a litre of petrol. It's actually 149 uh, when you actually come to pay. You get a discount at the place of payment, not on the signs outside. Haven't been around Europe this summer. I have to say that Spain can purge really well on prices, but inflation eventually will get to everyone and everything if it isn't brought down by the end of the war in Ukraine, a Green New Deal and supply chains reopening around the world. It cannot go on at double digit levels for long without causing major hurt for everyone, especially people on low incomes or fixed incomes. So that's it. It's just a bit of a lifestyle thing this week. It's telling you about what's happening in the market. It's telling you about what's happening as regards prices and stuff. But we do have our recommendations to finish off. And our recommendations this week are for the property of the week, the video of the week, and the article of the week. The property of the week is a full house in Cabanyal. Now, the Cabanyal, as you will know, is down by the beach in Valencia, and we've got unusually a full house there. Most of the houses are now divided into a ground floor flat and a first floor flat. This is a full house, and therefore, when it comes onto the market like this, there's lots of interest. Take a look at the link, see whether you're interested in it. 
The video this week, well, we have two actually. One we took in the newly modernised Plata Arena in central Valencia. The square has a totally different feel now there is no traffic. Take a look, see what you think. The second is a longer one, it's a Valencia travel guide from the Attaché channel on YouTube, where the channel owner fell in love with the city, and therefore came back two weeks later in order to make a video. The article of the week, well, it's all of our recent articles, so the link in the show notes is just to the blog. Yeah? Have a look at the last six articles, because they've all been written since the summer hiatus. But now it's time for another hiatus. This time, until the next podcast next month. Meanwhile, keep popping back onto the blog, where there will be weekly posts, onto the property pages, where we update daily, and follow me on Twitter at Greyhunt to see me swearing, abusing politicians, and sharing lovely Valencia content for you. Remember one last thing before we go. Get in touch with us whenever you can, in whatever way. Ask us questions, ask for information, and when you're coming over, let us know, and we'll find you your perfect Valencia property. Thanks a lot, and until next time, it's goodbye. The music this week is by Kevin MacLeod. And everything else is done by me, Graham, in my studio, in my living room in Valencia.